Today is the 25th of August, 2010. We are at the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. Uh, my name is Wayne Clark. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth, please? Jake, Jacob Novo. Uh, place of birth was New York City, New York, uh, June 29, 1927. Did you attend school in New York? I attended uh, school in uh, New York City, in Cold Spring, mm -hmm. and uh, after service I attended college in Oswego okay. and at New York University. And, and whereabouts did you attend high school? I attended high school three years in New York City and one year in Cold Spring. And what year did you graduate from high school? In 1944. Do you remember where you were and what you were doing when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? Yes, I was in Cold Spring, uh, up at the football field near the high school, and uh, we're, I was watching the game, and someone came up and said to me, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, and I didn't know where Pearl Harbor was, but I was alarmed and said, what's going to happen? Yes. Did you find that uh, life changed for you after that? Uh, I was attending high school, as I said, in New York City. Uh, I just started in September 1940, and uh, where I noticed a difference in New York City mm -hmm. in the three years. I noticed uh, the increasing amount of military people, the uh, discussions of the war, the uh, blackouts in New York City, uh, people were afraid that perhaps Germans would bomb the city, mm -hmm. uh, afraid that uh, German submarines would come up and shell the city. So I remember uh, people were uh, had much fear of this, and I heard the discussion, although I wasn't really that concerned, as because I was just only a young teen. Mm -hmm. Did your uh, family experience any shortages uh, with the rationing? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, and the ga with the gas rationing. My father uh, was working in Washington, D.C. There was no work, he was a carpenter. There was no work um, in the 30s. So in 1938, he went down to work as a carpenter in Washington, D.C. He lived in Alexandria, Virginia. and. Uh, and so he, he would come up once or twice a month and tell us about all the different things that were happening in Washington. And that's how I, I, I was much more aware of what was going on because of what he related to me. Did your father have a car? He had a car down in Alexandria, in mm -hmm. Washington. That's how he went to work. He, I remember the sticker on the car. I forgot what it was. It was A, a or, I, I don't remember, but I know that everybody had a sticker it would uh, denote just how much gas. They had coupons that they would use. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother, uh, being kind of, she's from Sicily, as well as my father, uh, she um, uh, gave us uh, primarily vegetable dishes, not too much meat, because there wasn't that much available. Mm -hmm. uh, but being in New York City, and uh, I used the uh, public transportation there frequently. I was really not intrinsically aware of, uh, of a problem with mm -hmm. transportation. Did you participate in any sort of scrap drives or any, yes. anything for the war? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. We used to uh, take the, uh, the cigarette packages we find and take the tin foil off and put them into, into uh, balls like this and then the junk men would come along and, and uh, give us a couple, a few cents for, for that. Uh, and uh, I remember the signs over buy war bonds, uh, you know, conserve, uh, watch out what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, Nazis are listening, Japs are listening. You know? mm -hmm. well, what about in so long ago? I, I forgot a lot of it. You know? Now, what about in school? Were there air raid drills too? Well. I, I, you know, I went 
My father didn't want me to go to school in, in Cold Spring because it was a small central school. He was a carpenter, and he was a, a tradesman, and I was, uh, he insisted I was going to learn a trade, but it wasn't going to be carpentry. He was going to, for some reason, he says, you're going to be a printer. So I went to the New York School of Printing, mm -hmm. which is a vocational high school on 34th Street and 8th Avenue, right in the heart of, of Manhattan. Uh, anyway, they were, I remember one day talking about how it was related to the war. We uh, all had to contribute, I, I think there were about 2,000 students in the school. It was uh, primarily on 34th and 8th, and then we had an annex on 8th Avenue and 36th Street. So about 2,000 kids. So we all contributed money. Anyway, the main post office in New York City was right next to us uh, on 30, uh, 33rd and 8th Avenue. And I remember the whole student body uh, in front of this tremendously big post office. And J. Henry Holloway, our principal, standing on the, and these military people were there, and we had donated four ambulances to the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And so we all had to march from our school to the, uh, uh, the steps of, of the uh, uh, post office where there was a ceremony, but it, uh, a funny thing that uh, as we were marching along, <laughs> uh, walking along, you know, uh, in file, from the school to the post office, some of the women say, God, they're drafting them young. <laughs> 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 they thought we were going to. <laughs> now, uh, you went in in 1944 after 44. you graduated. Right, right after I graduated. Did right you after. enlist or were yes, you drafted? enlisted. And uh, you went into the Coast Guard. No, I went to the Navy. Okay. And the Navy. I went up to Samson, New York, and up to uh, the uh, boot camp in Samson, New York. Now, why did you pick the Navy? Any particular reason? Some of my friends were in. Okay. Were in and they came back and told me about all the good times they had. And I thought, you yeah. know. I really, I was already just turned 17 years old, mm -hmm. so. What was things like at Samson? Uh, I was in the, in the G unit, they used to call it the Gestapo unit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, for some reason, they thought the, uh, the drill instructors were stricter. But, but we were uh, two companies in each building, and uh, there were hundreds of buildings. There was a tremendous amount of people there. It was... Uh, it was right there by um, Geneva, mm -hmm. by Geneva, New York. We now, was that your first there. first time away from home? First time away from home. We, we all got on a train in New York City. Mm -hmm. That's where we started from. And the train went up to uh, somewhere, probably uh, near Syracuse in that particular area. And then we uh, got to Samson. And uh, we stayed there 10 weeks. Then after the 10 weeks, we were um, we went back to... Uh, we went to, I'm trying to think of where we went. We went to New York, and then the, uh, the train, we got on a train, and went all across to California mm -hmm. on the train. And we ended up at uh, Hunter's Point in, uh, outside of San Francisco, Treasure Island. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the Navy had a tremendously big base right there. And uh, so I, I had done very well on, a, on an examination for radio operating, and uh, I was supposed to go to a radio operator school, but they said they're going to send it to a, in Hawaii. I was going to Hawaii, so I got on on the USS Pennsylvania mm -hmm. in California, and it went to Hawaii, and I got off the ship there, and went up to the base, and they said. The next day they said, you change your plans, you're assigned to the Pennsylvania. And so I went back down and became a part of the crew of the USS Pennsylvania. Now what was your job on the Pennsylvania? So on Pennsylvania I was, I was a seaman. I was a deckhand, decade as they said. So it was basically on the job training? Yeah, right. You know, I called that, you know, swabbing the deck and all that. But uh, I was assigned uh, at first to the powder room. We have, in Pennsylvania, well, as you know, battleships have 
four mounts and three cannons in each mount. And uh, so we were on mount number four. And uh, so my first exposure to a task was in the powder room. Uh, it required two 100 pound bags of, of uh, powder. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fairly sure it was two or it could have been four. But anyway, there were two in each canister. And my job was to open the canister, take the, the powder bag out, put it in a scuttle, and pass it through. I, uh, at about that time, I was attending mass, uh, and the chaplain, they, were, they had a Catholic chaplain and a, and a Protestant chaplain, and I'm Catholic. And uh, so the Catholic chaplain said, Is, are there any of you here who could serve mass who know Latin? And I did. And so two or three of us volunteered, and I, um, I, Father Burke was saying he was a controller at Notre Dame University, and uh, he said, uh, "Can you serve mass at six o'clock?" First, he he wanted he wanted me to say the confiti or the, uh, and I did in Latin. Told he says, "Good, you're you're on," <laughs> and I, um, uh, he said, "Could you could you be here at six o'clock every morning and serve mass?" It was, it was something because what, what would happen besides besides doing the work at the deck, uh, I was assigned to uh, the bridge, the uh, surface lookout, mm -hmm. and you're on four off eight on four off eight, except when you're in battle zone then it's four on four off. Uh, so what would happen is that I was on uh, lookout watch. Surface lookout, not the air. Surface lookout, uh, from noon to four, and from midnight to four, and then I had to serve mass at six o'clock in the morning. Oh my goodness! So it was quite. Uh, sometimes while I was eating, I, I get sleepy, almost fall asleep. <laughs> so, but that—that's what I did. And then we, and my battle station was on a forty millimeter, mm -hmm. and uh, my job was to drop the clips into. The, the, we were trained to do it, you know. And uh, we wore our helmets and our battle things, something like that. And it was, a, it was, it was, it was scary because the Japanese plane. We, we, you know, we went to Wake Island first, and then we went towards Okinawa. Oh, let me ask you: When did you go aboard the Pennsylvania? Oh, when did I go? It was, it was in the fall of forty-four. Forty-four. Okay. And uh, so when. We, like I said, we got there. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about when we got towards Okinawa. The invasion was going to be in Okinawa, and uh, our job, you know, the battleships, the cruisers, was to shell the heck out of this whole area before the landing started. Mm -hmm. And um, I know the Hissam, our first class petty officer, came up to me. He says, "Jake, you know, you and two or three others." Uh, you're going, and we're going to send you to an APA. And they're landing, and uh, they need some help. Now, the, now, what's an APA? APA is a troop ship. Okay. And uh, so we were, we were sent to the uh, APA with the Higgins boat. And from there, our job was to go with the coxswain, who was a Coast Guardsman, who ran these Higgins boats into the landings at, at Okinawa. And our job was to assist them. So. We would go alongside the APA, and these poor uh, Marines and Army people come down that rope ladder, drop into the boat, and then we would uh, all assemble together and then go in. And uh, sometimes there were a lot of flak, a lot of uh, planes, etc. Sometimes it was hardly anything. But we would uh, bring these poor guys with their helmets and with their rifles and all their packs. Drive, drive them into uh, the shore. Sometimes we wouldn't go right into the shore. Sometimes it, you couldn't because there were reefs or whatever. And these poor guys would go into the water, and uh, oh god, it was terrible. But they landed. They landed, and uh, and then we did that for about oh, I'd say I don't know. I, I'm thinking a week to a week and a half of that, and then now was your boat under direct fire when this was happening? Well, my ship was a Pennsylvania. 
and the Pennsylvania was out there shelling mm -hmm. as they go along. But then when it was signed to the EPA, uh, I don't, I don't think they, no, no, they, they were, they were not under fire. No, they were not. Okay. Um, so then after this, I went back to the ship, and uh, and then we, we we went to several places down to Australia. I forgot different places. Came back to Okinawa right about the time the war was ending, which was in August uh, 45. And uh, I remember that day we came in, and we came into Buckner Bay mm -hmm. in Okinawa, and uh, we worked like heck that day because the Tennessee, the other battleship, apparently had some of the, see we were the flagship of, of that fleet, the Pennsylvania was the flagship. And uh, so we took all the uh, equipment and, and maps and uh, documents from the uh, Tennessee back to the Pennsylvania put it on that, during that day. Well, anyway, so then I, my watch then was different. My watch was was from 4 to 8. So we went on watch after work at 4 o'clock, 4 to 8. I got off watch. Right there were concerned because the war was over, the hatches were all open. but. Some of the officers behind me on, on the bridge were saying, you know, there's still a lot of Japanese people out there. I'm not sure if this is a smart thing to have those. I, I remember, I didn't say anything, but I heard them talking. And so they were concerned with the right IFF, identification friend or foe. So when, when uh, I came down from my uh, watch at 8 o'clock, I uh, came down to my... Uh, down to our, my bed down there, and uh, we're on we're on the uh, quarter deck of the ship, and we went into I went to my uh, room, and um, I was I was so tired, I laid on, on my sack. But this guy, Ramirez, remember Jim and Ez, whatever his name from San Francisco, he had the guitar, and he said, "No, folks, come back up here, come up here, come on, let's sing with me, come on." I said, ah, I'm tired, don't bother me. Come on, come on, come on. So I got up from my sack and I walked from the back of the uh, room, all, right up to where the, the hatch was. And just at that time, the torpedo hit us uh, and, and knocked the two screws off. And uh, it was, it threw me up. Fortunately, I survived, but it threw me up. I hit the I must have hit the deck or something, but like this, I came down, the water was coming in, the powder was coming in, so I, I had the sense enough to, to grab a hold of the uh, uh, something there, and I pulled myself up through, the water was coming, it was coming in, and I don't remember anything, I must have passed out, but the next thing I remember was in sick bay. And, uh, so you, you got through the hatch all right? Yeah, yeah, it, fortunately, it, there were 23 were killed. There were 28 of us in there, mm -hmm. and, and uh, if this nice person hadn't called, but insisted I come up, I wouldn't have been. I know they were all—all all the ones who were back there with me were all killed. Oh. And uh, if they weren't killed, they were drowned. Mm -hmm. If they were hurt, the water came in so fast that they had to close that hatch, otherwise the whole ship would go down. You know? So they, they dogged that hatch. And uh, so anyway, I got out of there, and um, well, like I said, I, I don't remember anything. I remember being sick bay, and, uh, and so I woke up. And I, the corpsman says, uh, "You're lucky, Jake." He says, "I well, you got a little scalp wound, and and uh, your, your your stomach is sore." I said, "Yeah." Well, I, so it was my ribs were, were, were it wasn't broken or anything. Anyway, so that was good. I, I lucked out, and. Um, I know the, the priest came down and says to me, you better get up because I need somebody to serve mass. <laughs> and I said, so then, then after that, uh, you know, the, the ship was, let's see, what happened? We were towed back from Okinawa to, was it Guam or Saipan? One of the islands. But the, uh, so we were towed back by ocean going tugs. We went through a, a typhoon that, uh, I read about that during August of forty-five. Mm -hmm. It was a typhoon. Yeah. I don't know if we went through the heart of it, but we went. It was rough seas all the way through. We got back to Guam, Saipan, Guam. I guess it was. We got into a floating dry dock, 
and they actually lifted that whole big battleship right out of the water with that floating dry dock, and they tried to repair it, mm -hmm. tried to repair it, and so I, they did. And then we got all got off, and we got into, you know, the war was over, and uh, so we got into troop ships and went back to California. I guess then the Pennsylvania was involved in the in the atom bomb test, and they and they, they couldn't even sink it then. So eventually, what I found out is that they they scuttled it. They brought it out to sea, and they dropped a bomb down the stack, and the ship sunk. Mm -hmm. Now let me let me just uh, go back a little bit. You enlisted in the Navy, but you ended up in the in the Coast Guard. No, well the Coast Guard the Coast Guard the coxswain drove the Higgins boat. The Navy people from I don't know why, uh, maybe that was their assignment. But the the Coast Guardsmen were the people that that ran the Higgins boat. We were oh. there to help them out. Okay, the, but, you, but know, you were active Navy. Well, yeah, I was active Navy. Okay. You know? and, and like I told you earlier, the, co the Coast Guard, I, he was really bad. I, I I said to him at one point, you better watch out, one of these soldiers is going to turn around and shoot you. You know, he, he would say, you guys in the Navy are a bunch of uh, glory boys, you don't know anything about water. It's the Coast Guard, but the only ones that know anything. And, and, and then when they would be coming down, the rope ladder was poor guys with those all that weight. He'd be hollering, "Get in front! Get in front!" And I said, "You better, you better be quiet. One of these guys is going to come around and kill you." <laughs> he was really a bad person, you know. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, all you had to stay with him for a few days. So, when the war ended, um, when, the, when, the when war you heard ended. about the dropping of the atomic bomb, was there a lot of celebration? Yeah. On, on board ship? Yeah, because, because well, okay, you know, what, what, uh, our division officer was a, an attorney from Cincinnati, uh, Dyer his name was, and uh, I remember twice he called us all together, those that were not on watch, and, uh, and he said, you know, you got to make peace with yourself because this is going to be really bad. He said, we're, we have to go in and invade Japan. He said, and those people are going to fight to the last person. So, he says, you know, uh, make your peace. And Father Brooke used to say the same thing. He says, pray hard, Jack, pray hard. This is going to be terrible. He says, those Japanese, they're going to, they're really, you know, it's almost mm -hmm. impossible to beat them. And we were, we were, I figured, wow, we're all going to die. You know, all going to die. Well, we heard the bomb was dropped and the Japs might surrender. We were so happy. We yeah. were, we mean we're going to be alive. We're not going to die. <laughs> it was really, it was really a, a, a worrisome time. And uh, when when our leaders, you know, our officers and stuff, would uh, voice their fears to a 17, 18 year old kids, we figured, hey, you know, mm -hmm. it was it was a it was a happy time. I feel sorry for the poor people that died in Japan. But it was either them or us. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> now, uh, when you were in the Navy and over in the Pacific, did you uh, did you get to see any USO shows or any any kind oh, of entertainment? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We whenever we'd get to an island, we uh, they would uh, allow a lot of us to get off. We go in, in with the boats into the island, then we go to a site. We would be given three either three sodas or three beers or a mixture of three or whatever, whatever it is. I know our, our chief petty officer would always say to us, make sure you get one beer for me. <laughs> we, we, you know, otherwise you'll be in big trouble. You make sure you get another beer. But anyway, we, we'd go to a, to a site on the island someplace and we you know, we have a nice time, we relax. We'd have a soda beer, we'd have some music. Sometimes, uh, it would carry over to uh, a CB uh, evening of entertainment. When they would, I saw Bob Hope there. I saw Francis Langford. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw um, was it the polka dot girl? What was her name? Cindy Jones or anyway, it, it was good. And these these nice, you know, prof they were professional entertainers. But uh, they came over and they uh, sometimes they were in close to battle. Mm -hmm. They risked their lives. So we did that, and I um, know one other time we uh, we had to go get. Oh, this was this was something. I can't remember it. We had to go get the 14-inch projectors. Uh, they were on. I, this was I think this was Tinian, and uh, so anyway, there was a half a dozen of us and his officer, 
and we went on. I don't know it was a Higgins boat, but it was a boat. We went in, and uh, we were supposed to load on these uh, projectiles, and then they used a crane to pick it up. Well, anyway, we we had to wait around. So the officer says, um, "I'll tell you what. Go in. Go into the laundry room. There's a big laundry room there over there, and uh, we went and talked. There's some women in here, so we went in. We talked to these people. Came back out again. He says, uh, "We got to stay here tonight. This was like." in the evening. So we got to stay here tonight because they're not coming until tomorrow with, with the, the shells. So we're given a word that we have to stay here. So we went up got these big planks, these two by twelves. We put them down on the ground and we were sleeping on them at night. Oh God. So uh, in the morning, we're all up, you know, we went someplace, I forgot, we got some coffee. And we came out waiting for that truck. Well, here comes the truck. The truck backs up. Who jumps out? The little Japanese with PW on his shirt. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know, but they were like trustees, you know? Uh -huh. And uh, so that was, that, was, that was funny. But I saw that Japanese guy. I oh, my God. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of some other. Any stuff. other humorous incidents at all? Or? How how was the food aboard ship? Uh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know, when you go aboard a ship, uh, first time you go aboard, you have to, you have to be a mess cook. Everybody has to take their turn at it, and uh, so you know you're on on the chow line. You don't have to cook as much. You're usually on the chow line, and uh, so you serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's your duty for two weeks or three weeks. When you first got on board ship, that's like an initiation rite. And uh, so what the uh, guys from your division to come through and here you had like cherry pie or something like that, you know. Hey, no, we'll give me that. that, that. So I, I, I think, oh, why not, you know? So I'm sure, and this cook comes from behind me with the big knife, wow, he puts it down here like that. And he says, one day each one. I said, but they're my buddies. I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Huh? Now, did you uh, have any kind of celebration when you crossed the uh, yeah. equator? Yeah. You know, uh, I, I was spared to walk on deck because uh, right about that time they spotted some uh, some Japanese planes. And so we went to, to quarters, you know. <laughs> so, good. But some people had to walk the plank and uh -huh. all that kind of stuff. I, so you lucked out. I lucked out. Huh. I'm so happy the Japs came. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's a ritual. Yeah, you know, it's just part. It's part of being mm -hmm. in the Navy, you know. Yeah. But it's uh, some people get carried away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were discharged from California. Yeah, I was discharged uh, from California uh, in December. About December. Uh, I was discharged there in uh, San Francisco. Okay. And we got, you know, our sea bags and et cetera. And a bunch of us guys uh, stayed together from the from the ship. I remember going, uh, getting off in Chicago, and uh, we went up to Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Now, how did you go by train? By train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by train. I don't remember. It was a troop train. I don't. No, no. It wasn't a troop train. It was a regular train. I, I, met, I don't remember uh, how we got the tickets or whatever. I remember we were on the train. We got to Chicago, went up to Sheboygan, Wisconsin, because the guy that uh, was with us was like, eh, we had a good time up there. We finally got home. And, uh, and so my father had come back from Washington. And this was in Cold Spring? Back, back to Cold Spring. And you know, we kind of hang around with some of my friends and they were saying, don't go to work. You get $52, uh, $20 a week for 52 weeks. Uh, so take advantage of that. We'll go to the bar every day. We'll meet there and we'll talk about old times. And, we'll, and my father says to me, he just spoke broken English, you know, do that. You know, do that. I don't want no lazy kid. You go to work. <laughs> <laughs> No, 52, 20. I think I drew one or two checks and that was it. <laughs> so, so I went to work. So I went, like I said, I went to New York School of Printing. Mm -hmm. So I went to work in Beacon, New York, 
and the, and the uh, Howard Printing Company. I was a pressman. I, I ran presses and, and you know, did uh, job work, printed magazines, papers, things like that for about <clears throat> two, three years. And also, I worked in Cold Spring. They had a, news, a, a weekly newspaper there. I worked there, uh, ran off the newspaper once a week. Saturdays, I delivered mail. <laughs> I was a substitute mailman. A lot of things. And, and the fellow in the VA, we went to the VA a couple of times, and he said to me, you know, Jake, you did very well on your aptitude test. Why don't you utilize this uh, printing background and become a teacher? And uh, I figured, oh, I don't, know. I don't think I'm that. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. Said, so I, you know, I checked it out, and it seemed all right. So I went to Oswego State College. This through the GI Bill? The GI Bill, oh, otherwise I never would have gone. And uh, so uh, took industrial arts mm -hmm. and got my first job in, in Philadelphia as a, as a printing instructor. So it did, you know, pay off of mm -hmm. that. And uh, so I was, at that time, I wasn't sure whether I want to stay because I didn't pay too much money in teaching. And uh, I was doing printing on the side at night and Saturdays down in Philadelphia, making way more than I was making as a teacher. So it was a point there where I almost got out of teaching and stayed with my trade. But then I went back and uh, got a job back in Cold Spring, taught industrial arts with met people from Hyde Park and mm -hmm. these like Now this was at a high school you taught? Yeah, the Central High School in you know, mm -hmm. Cold Spring. And uh, then I uh, I got into guidance, where I studied guidance at New York University. And uh, so somebody said, you, listen, there's work overseas. So I uh, applied for a guidance job in the Department of Defense and went, uh, was accepted and worked at Kaiserslautern in Germany at the American Independent High School for a couple of years there. Now, were you married at, no, at that I was point? No, I was single then. And uh, then I, uh, my father passed away, came back. The funeral stayed and didn't, didn't go back. So I continued my study in guidance and, and eventually got at the Kingston, New York and had to be a guidance counselor and then I was director of guidance for the city of Kingston and then um, retired. What year did you retire? I don't know, I retired in 1978 mm -hmm. from Kingston and then I went down to Poughkeepsie uh, and became the director of guidance at Our Lady of Lourdes High School in, oh, yeah. po in Poughkeepsie for a few years. And uh, then I did a, other things like like I represented a college in Worcester, Massachusetts, went around. So I did you know, part time, mm -hmm. kind of quasi retired jobs, uh -huh. you know, uh, did courier work, uh, just something to keep busy. And, and when did you get married? I got married in uh, 1962, mm -hmm. <laughs> young lady from Schenectady. She was a, <clears throat> a nursing instructor, but, uh, well that's one year I worked one year as a, as a guidance counselor at BOCES in Yorktown, New York, and she was a nursing instructor. <laughs> so it was convenient, she was in, in the same school as I was in, so oh. within a couple of months we were husband and wife. Uh -huh. <laughs> Any children? Yeah, we have, I have I have two two children. I have uh, my my daughter was lives here in uh, near Albany. She's an attorney, and uh, and my son lives in New Jersey, and he's an attorney also. Oh. So I have five little five little granddaughters. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Now, did you uh, join any veterans organizations? Yeah, oh yeah, I I was very active with the VFW. Uh, Right from the time I got discharged, and, and, uh, James Harvey used his post, which is in Cold Spring, and uh, <clears throat> I was active there, became commander of the post, and then around 1960, I was uh, county commander of the VFW, Putnam County mm -hmm. commander. So I was very active in Veterans Affairs. We did a lot of work in Castle Point Hospital, and went there many times, put on uh, parties for the veterans, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, well, we still belong. I'm a life member of the James Harvey Hughes's post there in Cold Spring. 
Now, did you uh, stay in contact with people you were in the service with? Uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. For a while. Uh, I had, uh, yeah, a fellow in Ohio, Toledo, Ohio, a fellow down in Nashville, Tennessee. These are people that I kept in contact with. They both have passed away. Mm -hmm. So I have, now I have it. Any, any ships reunions that you've attended? Yeah, Pennsylvania. I, I went to several of them. Mm -hmm. when initially, when I first got out, there was one held in Philadelphia. I went to that one. There was one held in Baltimore. I went to that one. But then, in fact, I, I did the VFW magazine in the back. It usually has all the reunions. Uh -huh. I don't see the Pennsylvania one. I think we're all either uh, crippled or dead, one or the other. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't think that the youngest one could be what? Probably, I'm one of the youngest ones. Because in, in 44, 45, I was what? 17? Yeah. So I don't think it would be too many people that would be uh, what? In their 70s. It must, mm -hmm. be, it must be in the 80s too. Yeah. How do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Oh, it did tremendously. You know, what was, what was good, uh, I went to go to school in New York. So I would disagree with my, with my dad about that. I, I wanted to be a carpenter like him, but he wanted me to be a carpenter. But the, that prepared me for the service, going to live in, uh, with my relatives, but living like on my own. I had, New York City was a big city. I, I remember he, he said that uh, my aunt lived I live in my aunt. My aunt lived on 106th Street in Madison Avenue, and and the school was on 34th and 8th Avenue. And so you know, you take the subway and you change, etc. He showed me one time. And you know, this is how you do it: change here, change here, go here, and that's it. And from then, and I was on my own. And so things like that. And then my uncle had a Italian deli and bakery on uh, uh, 106th Street and and uh, Third Avenue. And it was a big time place there, really. And so I, I would work there also, uh, Saturdays, uh, weekends. I also had a job in the garment district, uh, moving those carts around with, with rolls of uh, material and dresses. So that experience of being almost like on my own, I mm -hmm. had the support of my, my relatives there, but you know, I had to figure things out myself. When I went to the Navy at 17, I wasn't the ordinary 17 yokel, mm -hmm. you know. I had three years of New York City life, mm -hmm. and boy, that makes you grow up fast. Mm -hmm. you gotta, you know, you got to be aware of things down there. Uh, where in Cold Spring, you know, you just take it easy, life goes by, but not down there. Uh -huh. So going into boot camp, you know, I was much more worldwide than I would have been if I had come right from Cold Spring. Uh -huh. So, but so, but, but then the military, uh, you know, it, it was, it was very difficult for me, but it, uh, it taught me to figure things out for myself. It taught me, you know, how to, how to live, how to plan, how to structure. It, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Recommended to everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> now, now you have a photograph there. Do you want to hold that up and tell us, uh, that was when taken, and where that was taken? That was taken in Samson, New York, boot camp. That was a, and I, I didn't ask for this. We all had to do it. <laughs> this was probably what, probably in July of '44. Okay. Uh, when I first went up there, you know. Okay. Any other incidents uh, uh, you'd like to talk about, or anything we haven't touched on? Let's see. Uh, I made some notes here. Let's see if, if I. Uh, Oh, when I was uh, uh, on watch, I never told you, we were flagship of the fleet, and Admiral Michener, yeah, Admiral Michener was on our ship, and uh, we would pull up alongside of the tin can destroyers that were with us. We were, we were the, it was the Pennsylvania, and then we had usually had um, one or two carriers with us. Uh, they were not the real, they were those, uh, Oh, I forget what they call them, but they were they were ships that were turned into carriers or like merchant ships. We usually had two of those with us, and we'd have four or five destroyer destroyer escorts with us, um, and 
Let's see what I want, what I want to tell you about that. Uh, <laughs> why, why am I telling you this? Mm. Oh, oh, okay, okay. We were, because of the, of the uh, admirals and the officers on the ship, we had to be GI. Mm -hmm. you know, none of, our, of course, none of our uh, hats were white. They all had to be blue because of the planes could see it, things like that. They were all dyed material, but we all had to be GI'd because they were round. Well, anyway, we had the fuel and the destroyers pull up alongside of us, and we refueled the destroyers. Uh -huh. you know, and we passed the pipes along and back and forth like that. Well, we'd look over the destroyers, and these guys would have beards, and they'd have their dungarees cut off above their knees. <laughs> How's that happen? How come we can't do that? You know? Because you had the air roll on the ship, and you had, uh, you had, everything had to be squared away, you know. And uh, well, anyway, I was standing surface lookout. I don't, I don't remember how close when it was, but, but you know, midnight at 11:30, 11, 11:45, you had to go into this before you went on, on lookout at midnight. You had to go into this room, and there were like uh, uh, like a red light all the way around the edge, like this, and you had to sit in there for about 15 minutes and then go out. So then when you, when you, you could see things better, otherwise, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, you know, uh, about one o'clock, the cookies had come along with the uh, hot joe mm -hmm. and uh, spam sandwiches, things like that, just to keep you going. And they come around maybe two o'clock. Well, you know, you sit there like that and then uh, and working during the day and going to serve in mass at six o'clock. Sometimes you start getting sleepy, anyhow. So this one, I'm, uh, you know, like I said, you got your binoculars and you got your helmet on, and I'm. It was a rough sea, so I was holding on to the stanchion, that, that pole that I holding on like this, and I, and apparently I didn't realize it. I was dozing off, and I get this finger behind me like this says, uh, "Stay awake, son. The war soon be over." I said, I didn't turn around. I said, I don't know what that is. You know, I figured, you know, because we had the uh, Lieutenant J.G., this one guy was there with us all the time. And I figured it was him. And, you know, I didn't like him too much. Well, anyway, so he, so those are things that he comes over and he says, you don't know, no, you're lucky you didn't get court martial. I said, what, you just poked me? That wasn't me. He says, that was Admiral Mitchell. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I said, how do you know I was sleeping? He said, well, you can see. <laughs> that, was, that was scary. Uh -huh. I told the, the priest there the next morning, Father Bert, yeah, I said, I would have got you off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so that, that was a scary thing, but yeah. a funny, funny now. <laughs> now, what rank were you when you were discharged? I was a seaman first class. Okay. I never made it a third class petty officer. Uh, Let's see if there's any, anything else I can tell you. I told you about the servant of the mass. I, I, and, uh, oh, the observation planes. That, that was interesting. Uh, you said that you were into helicopters, so this would be interested in that. Um, our ship had two OS-1s, they call them, observation planes. Uh, they, they're, big pon they're on pontoons, mm -hmm. you know? And we had the catapult in the back. You turn that catapult around, Put the charge, they'd rev up, and then you'd fire that charge, and the plane would go. And then when the plane would come in, it would come and land on the float, and we'd have a sled. We'd drop a sled down like that. The plane would come right up, land on the sled, then with the crane, pick it right up and put it back on, yeah. on, on, on the thing. That to me was very interesting to watch that whole thing. And um, and sometimes they they would pull, well, for, for practice, for target practice, the OS-1 would pull, they'd take off, and they'd have a sleeve behind it, mm -hmm. and you'd shoot at that sleeve. <laughs> I, 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 one pilot never said that, but with this one pilot, he was a nice guy, and uh, we were cleaning the plane and doing things there, and I, so I said to him, aren't you afraid we're, we're going to shoot, we're going to shoot you down instead of this one? <laughs> no, 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 but uh, I, I thought that they were so courageous. They really, they had a uh, machine gun, they had something mm -hmm. in there where they could defend themselves, but they didn't have much. Yeah. If the Japanese Zero came out, I don't think they had a chance. Plus the fact, 
you know, it's like like we were landing. I tell you, this is something too. It was really awful, really awful. Although I guess that happens a lot. We were we were coming in with our Higgins boat like this, and I don't know. I'd say the one was well, maybe a little bit further than that, away from us like that. And we were all coming in like this, and all of a sudden that thing blew up. Shell from one of our ships hit, that, hit one of our Higgins boats. Uh -huh. And a piece of a boot coming and landed in ours. They were all killed. Jeez. And blown apart. Yeah. So that's, that's a bad thing that happened. Yeah. Scared the hell out of you. Poor, poor guys. Um, then we would go, oh, gee dunks and pogey bait. You know what that is? Gee dunks and pogey bait, ice cream, candy. They, they had a place there, and, and uh, so while you're scrubbing the deck, well, I didn't get it out too much because usually I was on watch from noon to four. But before I started on watch, we'd be out there scrubbing the decks. And so the third class buddy always say, okay, time for a geek dance and pokey bait. So everybody chip in money. What do you want? I want, a, I want this, I want that. So somebody had to go down and get it, you know. And I went down just at one time. And, well, I said this big long line. I said, where did money come from? I mean, doesn't anybody work here? It was, but they had the, the maligners, guys that would, you know, try to get out of work and they yeah. make an excuse, they get in line, come right back and get it off. Uh, that was, that was, uh, hmm. uh, chip and paint over the side. Every time, you know, every time we'd come in to a port or something, we'd have to go over, uh, like on uh, platforms and uh, scaffolds. Yeah. And scrape paint. I, that was, I wasn't too crazy about that. That was terrible. Um, I think that's about. Uh, that's really good. Forty millimeters. Just uh, the one time I could remember. I mean, the Japanese planes were after us a lot, but one time I could remember. I forgot where that was. It must have been Okinawa. But uh, we, you know. We had you had the five inch thirty eights, the large the cans. We had uh, sixteen of those, and then we had forty millimeters all over the place, quad forty, double forty, and then you had the twenty millimeters. You had the fifty mill, fifty caliber machine guns. Well, anyhow, ours was a little bit higher. There, there were a couple down below us, right there by the by the deck. But ours is a little bit higher, and we had the quad forty, and. Uh, it was, I was I was dropping you know dropping the clips and like that and I'm looking and here comes the, not close but you could see it coming right in along the water. <gasps> I figured, oh, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> Fortunately, somebody got a wham, wham, wham right near us. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was that was scary. <laughs> yeah, hmm. that's about all I can remember. Yeah. Like I say, there are people who who encountered. Ten times more than I had, but that was it was only in a year and a half, so it was enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your okay. interview. All right. Thank you.